Hello again, friends. I'm sitting on the banks of the Clearwater River, South Bank, just immediately downstream from Orofino, Idaho, and immediately across from where the North Fork of the Clearwater joins with the Main Fork before it combines and flows to Lewiston, Idaho, and dumps into the Snake River. I don't know about you, I just know about me, and I can tell you, you're standing, sitting, looking, being part of something incredibly great. The entire course of American history changed with the great expedition of Lewis and Clark. It was called the Corps of Discovery. They trekked across America, they came to the Montana-Idaho border and were near mentally flabbergasted at the magnitude of the terrain, the wilderness of the area, and the dangerous consequences for being foolish and making stupid mistakes. They had horses that were given to them by the Indians to get them here. But when they got across the Idaho-Montana border, the horses did no good. The rugged, rugged terrain eliminated the use of horses. And so they were helped by the Nez Perce Indians to get to this place. It's called Canoe Camp. It's immediately across the river from where the North Fork flows into the main Clearwater River. And at Canoe Camp, the Indians taught them how to build a navigable and useful canoe out of trees, cottonwood trees. And they would chop out the center and then burn it to make it leak proof. Now, they're still a long ways from the Pacific Ocean at this point. But the Indians helped them, shared their knowledge, and also held and took care of their horses while they journeyed onto the Pacific Ocean and returned the following year. Greatness and great men and women walked here, talked here, camped here, right here where I'm sitting. Can you hear the conversation? If you listen, you just might hear it. Because those events are indelible. They're going nowhere. Now let's talk about your mind and what it provides you. God gave it to you and he gave you the ability to use it or abuse it. He left that choice in yours. But let's just talk about things here a minute. Sixty years ago, I learned something when I was in my fourth grade class. Miss Wood was my teacher, very strict spinster. You did things right, that's it, period. And we were studying pine trees. This is an example. I'm not bragging that your mind works the same way. Uh, predominance of the evergreens in this part of the world are what's called ponderosa pine or yellow pine. We know which they are because they come each one of their little bundles of needles comes in a batch of three every time. If it's got three bundles in the group it's a yellow pine. Most of that is used for home building structure. On the other hand, just above and to the north of this particular part of the world, the forest changes to white pine. And white pine has five needles in a bundle. Well, I, as usual, I was not paying attention in my class when this topic was being discovered. And so Miss Woods decided to make me a example, an example. So she humiliated my ignorance and me together in one fell swoop by exposing how little I was paying attention and how little I knew as a result of it. And then she said something, now this is over 60 years ago. 
she said, David, you will remember this day and what I taught you for the rest of your life. And when you're an old man with gray or white hair and many great-great-grandchildren, you will remember the lesson that I taught you in my fourth grade class. Well, here it is, 60 plus years ago. Thank you, Miss Wood, because I've never forgotten my lesson. And going further, I've always taught it to my children and grandchildren. I don't know where you'll all be 25, 30, 50 years from today, but you'll remember this day because you sat where the Lewis and Clark expedition built their canoes after trading the horses to the Indians to journey on across the United States of America today as we know. I don't know about you, but I'm proud to be part of that whole song. I'm proud to have learned about it, traveled to see it, feel it, step on it, and then look upstream and see that massive big dam, that, that is called Dwarshap Dam. It's right above, across the river and above, right here where I'm saying, right about in this area. It was argued, fought over, nobody wanted it. But Senator Dorshak wanted it, and guess what? He got it. It inundated hundreds of thousands of acres of prime winter habitat for the wild animals that lived in those remote forests. Sometimes we make good decisions, and sometimes we don't make good decisions. The important thing is you become a decision maker because all successful people, all successful effective leaders are decisive people. Make sure you're counted among them. Peace and love to all of you. Papa Bear. Merryweather. Merryweather, come down here and give me a hand. I want to put my boat in the river because I'm going to the Pacific Ocean. It's just a little too long and a little too heavy. What do you mean you don't want to hear any more excuses? Now listen, we're both leading this organization, but who's really in charge? I just want you to know, that's the North Fork of the Clearwater. It's called Chapanish in the native Indian tongue. So I've asked you to come help me push a boat in the water. Now I'm going to ask you to help me Chapanish the logs. And if you don't do either one of those, I'm going to tell you sayonara so long. I'm out of here. I'm going up to where we came out of the forest off the end of the low, low trail. Aloha. Which is Indian for let's twist again like we did last summer, baby. We're standing right about here. Main Clearwater flowing west. North Fork of the Clearwater flowing straight south. Dwarshack Dam blocked the whole river. Ended the salmon and steelhead runs. Why? Dam too high. No fish left. Hopefully we get wiser as we put on a few years. This looks a lot like my cousin from Peoria. I can tell because he's got his hands in the air. Could be swatting flies or picking cherries, I'm not sure. You're in the heart of wild country.